We are quickly approaching the first release of Empire or Expanded Revan's Revenge, a mod which converts the RTS game Star Wars Empire at War into the Old Republic period. And today we're going to be going over what to expect from this first upcoming version of the mod, as well as some of the plans going forward. First, let's talk a little bit about the setting for the mod. The mod takes place in and around the era of Knights of the Old Republic's RPG duology. The plans for the mod currently are split into five eras, with two eras covering the Mandalorian Wars, which ran from 3976 BBY to 3960 BBY, or years before the Battle of Yavin, and then two eras covering the war between Revan and Malak Sith in the Republic, going from 3959 to 3956, with a split between the two when Malak betrays Revan and takes over leadership of the Sith. The final era is known as the Dark Wars period, covering the period of 3955 to 3951 BBY, so the events of Knights of the Old Republic 2 in the period leading up to it. We're also keeping a slot open to go even earlier than any of this, covering the Sith Wars from the Tales of the Jedi comics. However, all of that is more speculative and isn't part of the initial plan for the mod. Eventually, we may also expand to do other much later eras covering the Old Republic MMO, but that is a completely separate set of content set 300 years later, so very little of it applies to the time period we're working with, although there is some information in the game on either ships or characters which do apply to what we are covering. Galactic Conquest maps in the mod will be fairly familiar in style to what you've seen if you've played our other mods, Thrawn's Revenge and Fall of the Republic. While those mods have three sizes of progression maps, our main sandbox map taking you through the whole period of the mod, and Revan's Revenge will be starting with one size as we build up the rest of the content, and then going into the small, medium, and large sets in the future. In this first release, you'll be able to start on those progressive maps in 3964, when the fighting between the Mandalorians and the Republic really started to heat up, 3962 when the Mandalorian Wars reached their height, 3959 when Revan began the Jedi Civil War, and a final starting period right at the opening of Knights of the Old Republic 1. There will not be a starting point in the Dark Wars period just yet, as that's where we've completed the least content for character art and other mechanics. So while you will still be able to progress into that time period and through some of the relevant content, like getting Darth Treya and the Sith Triumvirate, the ability to start in the Dark Wars will be coming with a future update. As in Thrawn's Revenge and Fall of the Republic, each of these starting points has its own different custom map, meant to ensure the most competitive starts for everyone, rather than having, say, a Mandalorian War start, where the Republic just has a huge swath of territory, and then no one ends up wanting to play that map because it's boring. Instead, we're focusing on relevant points of conflict, and making sure to include crucial planets for story or game mechanics that will unlock as you play through the timeline. On top of the progressive galactic conquest, there are the From the Ground Up maps, which are a challenge scenario allowing you to play starting with a single planet, and then custom maps, which allow you to set the ownership of planets manually before beginning to play. This first release will also include several story-driven historical maps, allowing you to play through narratively-driven campaigns based on various bits of lore from the period. And these campaigns all include some fully scripted missions. We're essentially going through these chronologically with the period, so we'll be starting with the three main Mandalorian Wars historicals, and then the Jedi Civil War and Dark Wars content will be expanded on in the future. But just like in Fall of the Republic, completing one of these story-driven galactic conquests will allow you to progress directly into the next chronological campaign, with some potential differences and even a campaign dedicated to an alternate ending for the war being playable depending on how you progress. On top of all the work to recreate some of these important storylines from various media like Knights of the Old Republic itself, the Tales of the Jedi comics, and other sources, sound effects, music, and custom UI HUD should all help recreate the experience of playing the RPG, although without the thing where you run around a table at low health with your party dead throwing grenades to win fights. I suppose I won't get any rest until I talk, will I? The Mandalorians, Republic, and Sith will all be fully playable in this first release in both Galactic Conquest and Skirmish. For now, the Skirmish and Special Game modes only include regular Skirmish and Survival. However, we will be able to hopefully expand it to some of the other custom game modes like Flagship Supremacy in the future. With this first release content-wise, the focus was on getting the factions to a baseline playable and workable state regardless of era. This means that where we'd normally have a lot more research and air-dependent tech in our other mods, instead the core rosters tend to be universally available. 
with most research only relating to cross-faction ships for different flagships on specific heroes, like the Sith Interdictor's early Republic Line prototypes being available for characters like Saul Carith during his Republic career. This means that, in the short term, you can expect some anachronisms. Ships like that same Interdictor will be available for the Sith from the start of the Mandalorian Wars, for example, instead of only coming in with Revan's leadership in the Star Forge for that faction. In the future, the hope is to have the Sith roster and faction mechanics involve pulling different units from various areas, like the Starforge recreations, integration of Krath remnants, research into Lost Sith alchemy, and so on. But doing that now would mean a much less varied experience in a roster that feels incomplete most of the time, so those kinds of mechanics will wait until we have enough content to warrant spreading them out. It being the first release also means to expect some placeholder usage, particularly in the world of character art for hero models and structures. For hero models specifically, there's a pretty high baseline of relevant characters we need to include, but character art takes a while to get through. So while we have a lot done, there are several characters using assets from the base game, Thrawn's Revenge, and Fall of the Republic, where we feel like the character's presence adds more than the placeholder art takes away, especially for something that's fairly small in-game. For the ground structures, we are similarly using placeholders from the other mods in base game. Once we know exactly how we want to divide up the ground assets for each faction, and we have some of the more gameplay impacting elements done, we'll be trying to create new structure sets as we've done for the Republic and CIS in Fall of the Republic. We have made a fully unique set of star bases for the mod, although for now we only have one unique one at each tier. So the factions will all be sharing one set, while we diversify with per-faction stations for future releases. Even with this relatively thin focus at first, there are some unique independent forces to come across for the Huts, who will eventually be a fourth playable faction on their own, and some of the other themed independent forces. Some early setup work has also been done for the primary faction mechanics, which are aimed at emphasizing unique playstyles for all three playable factions, including varied or unique content and rewarding progression. For the Republic, this includes the Command Staff mechanics also used by the Republic and New Republic in Fall of the Republic and Thrawn's Revenge, allowing you to pick which heroes you want to play with. An extension of this is the Ebon Hawk Party System, which allows you to set up a landing party for the Ebon Hawk exactly how you can in Knights of the Old Republic itself. For the Mandalorians, they have a mechanic for some of their commanders, which gives them additional flexibility, allowing them to swap between a few different modes on top of the tactical bloodlust mechanic, where the Mandalorians can gain a stat bonus for taking out specific enemies in battle, or they can lose stats for failing to do so. The Sith also have two mechanics right now. First is the Sith Master mechanic, where you're able to engage in some Sith politics, helping your Sith apprentice potentially overthrow their master, and allowing the player to train replacements through a pool of possible acolytes. This means each character has an acolyte, apprentice, and master form, with varying capabilities based on what position they're in. So if you want to work towards having a super powerful Sith Master Yathura Bon, that's something you can do if that's where the game goes. But most importantly for the Sith is of course the Star Forge. Sith space, let's face it, is not the most industrially developed. So the secret behind the Sith's success is the massive Star Forge. Several planets on the galactic map are home to ancient Rakatan star maps, which hold the key to the Star Forge's location. A relay can be built by the Sith at these planets which allows the planet to act as a level 4 shipyard, along with eventually giving access to a few unique ship variants. But if the Republic or Mandalorians are able to track down enough of these maps for themselves, they're able to launch an assault on the massive station, shutting it down for good if successful. Right now, this consists of a space mission, but eventually it will also include a ground element. That's a very brief overview of what you can look forward to in Revan's Revenge first release, and keep in mind it is only the first release. There's plenty planned to come in the future releases of the mod, and this is where we're testing out core systems before going too far down any road. So on top of content expansions, we plan to use the 0.5 release to gather feedback on the major changes from our other, more established mods, since the different nature of the era has meant certain things had to be handled differently. This process will be starting when the mod enters beta. While we don't have an exact date for when that will happen, it will be within the next several weeks. All of our betas are run through GitHub, with feedback collected on our Discord server. If you're interested in joining the beta process, you can follow the link in the description to get to the Discord server, and the instructions will be available there. These beta periods are open to almost any server member above a certain minimum threshold, but keep in mind the point of these betas is to gain specific feedback, 
not just to get the mod and play it early. Things will be messy, especially for a first release like this, and there is some extra work and management involved in getting everyone set up with the beta. So if you do want to help test and provide feedback, please follow the sign up instructions on the server. But if you're just looking to play the mod as soon as possible, we ask that you please wait until the public release. You'll enjoy it more that way anyways. It's not like a major game release where we're just looking for final notes or network stability or something. This is a key part of the final actual development stage. You'd be surprised how much things really come together in those final weeks of testing. Either way, we hope you're looking forward to the first release of Revan's Revenge.